Now that we are familiar with the neural network representations and uh, what are the terminologies we use in representing neural networks, it's a good time to see how neural network performs the actual computation. How given a set of inputs, it's able to uh, do some computation in different neurons in different layers and come up with an output. So here again we will see uh, the example with single hidden layer. So first let's see the computation of an artificial neuron. So these neurons are the units and we also call it perceptron sometimes. And this neuron is the unit of computation in human brain and that's why it's artificial neuron where we are trying to mimic that behavior and it's also called perceptron. So uh, if you look at a single unit here, you will see that uh, different inputs are coming in and we will associate different weights with them, W1, W2, W3 for each input. And then we also add one bias. So here we are just multiplying X1, W1, adding, adding to X2, W2, and then add W3, X3, and finally B. So this way we compute the Z value and then finally we pass it with an activation function to compute the activation. So these are the two steps. Sometimes you will also see this neuron representation like this, written like summation and then some function like this to denote activation function. So this summation denotes this computation of Z and activation denotes this sigmoid or any other kind of activation. And uh, if you look at a neural network now, each of these individual neurons, so we are looking at just one layer, single hidden layer. In practice, this will be a much more deeper neural networks where we will have multiple of such layers. And each of these neurons will be performing two computations of Z and A. So let's look at for a few units in this first layer. We will call it layer one. So this is, this we will denote as, this will be Z1, 1. And we had seen that this square bracket, if we are writing some quantity here, and we have a square bracket i and in the bottom we have subscript j then this denotes quantity associated with layer i and jth neuron in that layer. So this will be z11 and this will be a11 Similarly, if you look at this, it will be Z again 1 since this entire thing is in layer 1. But here we will use subscript as 2 since it's the second neuron. And so on. So what will be Z11? One, one? It will be W1 one, 1 transpose x plus b11 and in order to compute this we will just consider these weights so forget about other inputs coming in just focus on these three inputs x1 x2 x3 coming into the first neuron ignore for now all the other arrows so clearly three inputs are coming in so there would be three weights here and we would be adding that w1 x1 w2 x2 w3 x3 so this W1 will be a 3 cross uh, 1 vector. So this W transpose will be 1 cross 3. And uh, this X is uh, a vector of 3 values. This X denotes this vector, which is 3 cross 1. So this entire thing will become 1 cross 1. And this will again be 1 cross 1 to get Z11. Similarly, we will do it for Z21 and it will be W1, W21 transpose X plus B21 
and again the, again the dimensions will be same one cross three vectors this w two transpose and so on so let's write down the remaining values so we will get these things and the corresponding activations are just sigmoid of z1 similarly this will be sigmoid of this so now we need to vectorize it uh, we cannot run for loop since the number of neurons can be large so we will call this vector as capital z1 so we have removed the subscripts so this will take care of all the neurons in a given layer so this is this vector z11 z21 and so on and then this will be having all these values w1 one transpose times x so we will write x separately so x is this three dimensional vector x is this uh, x1 x2 and x3 so let's write x here and here it will be so we had seen that this w1 transpose will be uh, 1 cross 3 and we will write it four times since we have four neurons so this entire thing becomes four rows for each w w1 w2 w w4 and three columns since w1 is originally three because we had seen that in order to compute a1 we will take these three weights and multiply with the three inputs so weight is also three dimensional three cross one so weight transpose will be one cross three so we have three elements in this column so four cross three and this is three cross one so output will be four cross one which will denote this first thing will denote w1 transpose x uh, which is this and finally we can add these things so we can call this quantity as this vector as b1 and this will be 4 cross 1 and it will include b11 b21 each of them are 1 cross 1 so this is the vectorized representation of z1 so we can write a shorthand for this w matrix we can call it w1 weights associated with weight matrix associated with layer 1 and what will be its, its dimension 4 cross 3 and similarly x vector plus b1 so this is the vectorized representation of uh, all this notation and once we have this z uh, we will write a1 equal to sigmoid of z1 and this a1 vector denotes these quantities so it's again 4 cross 1 this is also 4 cross 1 and this is a vectorized sigmoid implementation so this way we have uh, done the vectorization for layer 1 computation similarly we can carry on for other layers in this case we have just next layer is output layer so again it will be uh, this output will be equivalent to a2 so just uh, again refreshing it z1 is 4 cross 1 this is 4 cross 3 w1 weight matrix and x is 3 cross 1 so this entire thing becomes 4 cross 1 and plus it's uh, again uh, 4 cross 1 and this will again be 4 cross 1 similarly this uh, z2 will be 1 cross 1 weight will be 1 cross 3 here and this will be 3 cross 1 uh, this a1 
Uh, I've written mistake here. It should be 1 cross 4 and 4 cross 1 since there are 4 units here. And this will again be 1 cross 1. Similarly, this matches with the dimension of A2. So this is how neural network performs the computations.